Remove all hoses with the appropriate sized open end wrench. Consider using a padded wrench to protect the finish of your regulator. Mount the regulator in a vise. Using a number six hook spanner with the pin adjusted to the depth of the dimple in the environmental cap and maintaining control of the hook spanner with pressure on the pin, remove the environmental cap by turning in a counterclockwise direction. If the environmental cap does not loosen easily, Use a second number six wrench to prevent loosening of the diaphragm cap. Adjusting its pin to the depth of the dimple and maintaining control of both pins, apply pressure to the environmental cap until it loosens. A pin which skips out of the recess will scratch the finish, especially on the environmental cap. This recess is especially shallow to prevent application of excess torque on reassembly. After a removal of the environmental cap and silicone disc, invert the regulator to allow the trans piston to drop free. Depending upon your method for removal of the diaphragm in step seven, consider leaving all but one low pressure port plug in place at this time. Mount the first stage in a vise with the vise handle in a high pressure port. Using a 6 mm straight shaft hex key, remove the DIN retainer. A ball end hex key has insufficient area and may damage the part. Lift the DIN wheel off. Using a 19 mm or 3 quarter inch deep socket, or an opened end wrench, loosen and remove the DIN housing. Remove the saddle. The DIN housing may resist loosening if the first stage is heavily corroded. Excessive force applied while held with a vice handle may damage high pressure port threads. Consider instead mounting the first stage in a vise with the sides only lightly clamped and padded with strips of leather or thin strips of wood. The body of the regulator is not clamped in place, rather the vice sides are used as a rigid container as force is applied. The hex flats on the DIN housing are shallow to facilitate rotation of the DIN wheel. If the DIN housing resists loosening and an open end wrench is used to loosen this fitting, all of the force is concentrated on two sides. This risks fracturing a point if excessive force is required. Instead, a six point socket will apply force on all six sides of the fitting. However, most standard sockets have a chamfer which further decreases the area over which force is applied. Consider taking a six-point socket and grinding the flats to unscrew a tight fitting. Mount the regulator in a vise by attaching a vise handle to a high pressure port. Unscrew the adjustment screw with a six millimeter hex until it is loose, but do not remove it at this time. Place a number six hook spanner with a 0.156 inch pin in the appropriate dimple in the diaphragm cap. Use of a smaller pin may deform the hole. Holding the pin firmly in place to prevent it from skipping out and marring the finish, with steadily increasing pressure, loosen but do not remove the diaphragm cap. Holding the regulator with the turret up to avoid losing loose pieces, unscrew the diaphragm cap assembly and its contents from below.
separate the six components of the diaphragm cap assembly and set them aside. Using a blunt pick or a pair of needle nose pliers, loosen and remove the diaphragm washer. Depress the edge of the diaphragm with a fingertip or small wooden dowel and use a heavy plastic pick to remove the diaphragm. Don't dig at the land in the body of the regulator with a metal tool. Alternatively, if compressed air is available and having left all but one low pressure port plug in place, apply a short burst of air in the open low pressure port to pop the diaphragm free. Maintain control of the parts by keeping your fingers over the top as the diaphragm is removed. If a stiffened older diaphragm still resists resist removal or compressed air is not available, an easy third method of removal is described later. Invert the first stage and let the lifter fall free. If it is retained by the high pressure seat, carefully lift it free from both sides to avoid bending the center pin. If you have not done so already, remove all low pressure port plugs with a 3 16 inch hex key. Using a six millimeter straight shaft hex key, loosen the turret bolt. Do not remove it at this time. Do not use a ball end hex as its small surface area may damage the flats in the bolt. Invert the regulator and using slight upward pressure on this spring leaded component, carefully unscrew the turret bolt assembly from below. Removal in this fashion ensures that the critical assembly comes out as a single unit and no components are lost. Separate the components and carefully remove the number four O-ring with a thin brass or plastic pick. Removal of the high pressure O-ring in the balance chamber of the turret bolt is the single most critical step in disassembly. Do not use a metal pick unless all other methods fail. Instead, using a heavy plastic pick, pry the O-ring well inward away from the sensitive land on the inner wall of the turret bolt. Then with the O-ring deformed, use the pick or a two to three millimeter plastic crochet hook to catch the O-ring from the inner wall, hook it and pull it out of the turret. It is critical not to scratch the inner land of the turret bolt with any metal tool. If a stiff and dried O-ring resists removal by all other means, use a thin metal pick to pierce the O-ring parallel to the land from the top. By inserting the pick in a direction which does not contact the land, you protect that critical surface. Then, prying inward, the O-ring can be removed and discarded. Remove the turret and O-ring number 23. If removal of the diaphragm was not possible earlier, insert a 1 8 inch wooden dowel in any of the three bores and push the diaphragm free from below. Then, Invert the regulator to allow the valve lifter to fall free. Carefully inspect the orifice with magnification if possible, looking for any irregularity or nick. Do not insert any metal instrument into the bore of the regulator. This completes disassembly of the D6 first stage. Dive Gear Express videos are made available for educational purposes only to provide general understanding of scuba diving related topics and not to provide specific advice. Please read the essential information page at the URL shown.